Hey guys, happy Halloween from Nerdy in many ways. I got Brigham Weedrick with me from Briggs Comics. And so, of course, to compliment his legitimate Joker costume, I had to put in my ghetto, you know, homemade costume for Batman. So just to make things work out. And so today, it's obviously a Batman-themed uh, video. Of course, again, happy Halloween. Halloween season's been great so far. But recently, I just finished completing the Arkham series, the video game series, by playing Arkham Origins, the game that wasn't made by Rocksteady, but still part of the series as a whole. And so, Brigham and I have played through several of the games. We would just want to rank our rankings of these Arkham games, right? And so, Brigham, why don't you start off with your last place? Last place, I never played Arkham Origins. I'm just going to say that. I, I never okay. played it. I've heard a lot of things about it. Mm -hmm. But from, like... I like the connection between all the uh, like Rocksteady or, or, or Arkham games, so don't take me on this because I never played it. I'm just put that as last, just get it out of the way, so like you can actually hear my real opinions about games I have. Okay, okay, and it's so hard because there's all these games are so good, like the Arkham games are so well put together. But if I had to put a last place one, even though I love it so much and I just finished it, I have to put Arkham Origins as well. I mean, it's it wasn't made by Rocksteady; it was made more by like Mo Warner Brothers Montreal. But it still feels like an Arkham game, which is absolutely fantastic. I loved it. I loved how, I guess, much less Riddler stuff they had for you to collect in order to beat Riddler in that storyline. And I just loved how there's always something to do in that game. And again, it pains me to say it's last, but that's the last one for me. And so I guess, what's the next one for you? I absolutely love this game. I remember growing up with it, growing up, watching my brothers play it for a long time. Mm -hmm. I finally played it. Arkham Asylum. I think the only reason is because it's older. Didn't have much as a free roam, which is really like what Arkham games are kind of like, I guess, known for nowadays. Nowadays, yeah, definitely. But Ar I love that game. I absolutely love the story with it. But because of how technology has grown, it's kind of gotten, I wouldn't say worse over time, but it's become less appreciated because new, new Batman games have come out. Right. Which I still love the game. Don't get me wrong about that. Right. This is where I kind of diverge from you. Again, I love this game that I'm going to say. And I feel like it's so uh, ragged on unfairly. But Arkham Knight's the second to last in my list. Even though I love it. I love the open world. I love the story. Um, I love, I mean, again, the free roam like you just said. But the only thing with that, there's a couple nitpicky things that bug me about that game. First off, I feel like Batman's head's too small. <laughs> That's a very nitpicky it thing. True. Um, and it's... I don't know. I, I do love it. I actually do enjoy the Batmobile, despite how much crap that gets from a lot of people. It was used too much. It was. It was used too much, but I loved you could actually use it. Right? I loved yeah. you could just simply drive around with the Batmobile. But I wish they wouldn't have forced you to. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, the only thing I wish they would have done is even let you use the, the Batwing as well. I feel like oh, that would have yeah. been really cool, because that's been something that's been featured in the Arkham games, but not utilized. And again, love Arkham Knight, but that's the second to last on my list. And so for you, what's the next one? So for third place, wait, third, right? No. Second place. Second place, sorry. For second place, I'm going to put, uh, yeah, Arkham Knight. Okay. Because it was, I, I already said it, I didn't like the Batmobile feature was too much in it. I wasn't a fan of the Batmobile design anyway. Okay. I didn't like it. I I thought the free one was fun. It was fun, except I feel like it was a rehash of Arkham City. Mm. Similar to how like, the play was around, going around, because you're fighting bad guys still. Right. But there's no one there. I was looking for like a more Gotham experience, which is something they really need to bring up. And even out with the Joker again, the, mm. the, the Joker's the main villain again. I love the Joker's villain, but like he's be, in every game now. Do more something original. Mm -hmm. And I love Jason Todd's storyline in it. I love Jason Todd's storyline in it, but really, it's not my favorite story. I don't okay. think the story was the best. Okay. And the second one for me is Arkham Asylum, just because it kickstarted everything. It was, it was. I remember uh, my older brother and I, we went to Walmart one day when it was, you know, first being released in Walmart's, and they had those, you know, demo things where you had to break your neck in order to look up and play it, right? Yeah. And Arkham Asylum was one of those, and we we're just like, oh, it's a Batman game, interesting. And we played it, and it was just a simple like brawler epi like, uh, episode, like episode where you could just simply fight and do the free uh, free motion fighting and everything. And we're like, holy crap, this is amazing. It changed the way hand-to-hand -hand combat games perform for, forever. And so just because that, and the story was great. I mean, yes, it was kind of 
uh, compressed into a small area and it honestly got confusing a lot of times as to what, what you're supposed to do and where you're supposed to go and how you're supposed to get to places but it was still so fantastic and again just really kicked off everything and so i kind of have a sense of what your top one is it's probably similar to mine yes arkham city is number mm -hmm. one for me i feel like it is the most the free room was fantastic the free room was really first like being developed mainly mm -hmm. of course skyrim had it much things had it but it was actually the opportunity to fly around gotham as bat not fly around like glide around gotham as batman and the story was not only good, but it was diverse. Mm -hmm. A different form of Batman, the fantasy, the, the realism of Batman, every single form of Batman villain you could possibly imagine was in this game. Mm -hmm. The Raja Ghoul level is fantastic. I love that. That's probably my favorite part of, what was it, like, the underground, like, Tomorrowland type thing? Yeah, Wonder City, yeah. Wonder City, yes. yes. Absolutely love that. Mad Hatter was awesome. Joker was fantastic. The ending of that, that game was fantastic. Right. I don't understand how you can get better from that. Right. No, I, I can agree. Arkham City makes the top one on my list just because, again, it was the first real open world uh, Batman experience that you could feel like Batman and glide around and, and find things to do. My only gripe with it is after a while, it becomes re it feels really small because like you experience everything and it's, it, it's supposed to be a condensed area, right? Yeah. Um, I just wish at some point you'd be able to explore the rest of Gotham City like you can in Arkham Knight and a little bit more in Arkham Origins. Um, but again, because of the fact that it was the first true like free roam experience as Batman was a really awesome thing. And again, the story again was top notch. Great characters, always a lot of things to do, a lot of things to explore, and a lot of Easter eggs throughout Arkham City. It introduced me to a lot of cool villains too, and I was younger, I didn't know who Hugo Strange was. And they introduced me to him, and he was a fantastic villain. That we'd like when I, I think of him in the comics, thinking of a bald dude as a scientist. Mm -hmm. But in the game, he was fantastic. So many like great villains put in it. I don't think Scarecrow was in it, was he? He wasn't. He was an Easter egg. His mask was on top of a bridge. Yeah. Yeah, but then Killer Croc in that game was fantastic. I like him better than in, in Arkham City than I did like him in Arkham Asylum. And I think a fun little thing about Arkham City that I love about it is uh, that a lot of players have discovered what's called the Arkham City Void which it's actually interesting to have showed this to you yeah. where you can phase through the wall of a building and basically phase into the area where the game designer stored the Riddler for all those cutscenes where he's on like a projection and it's just like a real open space where they put a bunch of other extra things that they didn't want to use in there and you can just go there and then get back out of it and back into the game no problem without breaking the game it's a really cool thing and I mean they also had um, the lightsaber in Deadshot's storage little container with all his weapons. Yeah, if you look closely, there's a little rod that re oddly resembles a lightsaber. <laughs> which, of course, is like an Easter egg with Mark Hamill as the Joker, right? Yeah. And of course, him being Luke Skywalker. Huh. But just small things like that were just really cool that they were able to put in there. And, of course, the Riddler one was probably you know just an accident and a mistake that they didn't intend for people to find. But I still found it to be cool. And, of course, Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill's performances. Right. Above anything else, the first three of the games did have that, but... Yeah, but... And even when Arkham, Arkham Origins didn't have that, which was a gripe with a lot of people, I didn't mind it as much. I felt like... I felt like kind of going back with Arkham Origins, that I feel like everything they did differently made sense. If that makes sense. Because, like, for example, the boss fights. Like... Deathstroke's boss fight in oh, Arkham Origins. It's so good, but so difficult, but it makes sense as to why. Because it's Batman's first encounter with Deathstroke. And all the other villains, too, it's difficult because it's Batman's tr first true encounter with it. And the only thing that really docks Arkham Origins really back with me as well is that uh, he, has, he ends up using the same technology that the Electrocutioner has with his gloves. And when you activate him, you're unstoppable. And it's like, well, that would have been convenient to use in Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, and Arkham Knight. Like, yeah, it's like I don't know why, but every it was like in Arkham Knight did the same exact thing where he the uh, he had to go back and get the electric gun from. Why do you have to do that? Right. Why do you, you have to like unlock it again? You already right. unlocked it in Arkham City. Why do you need to do that again? Right. So just slight continuity issues, but overall, the Arkham series is just a fantastic gaming series. Really has changed the way we look at video games based on superhero characters whereas a lot of the time it was simply like them walking on like in a straight like 2d display and like fighting bad guys and of course spider-man as well spider-man games have changed it quite a bit but arkham but if it wasn't for the arkham games that spider-man game wouldn't exist the ps4 one anyway yeah yeah the original ones though with Tobey Maguire. Those are pretty good, too. All right, so that's our rankings of the Arkham series games. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Happy Halloween. Stay safe out there, especially from this guy, because he likes to get in character when he's in this Joker makeup. 
So if you see him on the street, just run, run away. Uh, again, thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we'll see you guys next time. You're a bad person, Dawson. <laughs> <laughs> the Batman who laughs.